Okay, hi everybody, welcome back. Last period, uh, I assigned a question or a little mini assignment to create three buttons or three boxes perhaps and to have a uh, kind of a, a flash button here that you could press and all of these boxes would be green to begin with but when you click this flash button they would go consecutively one two three they would go red for one second so red for one second and then of course going back to green so essentially uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here's the application, and here's the this is the button here called Start Flash. And when I click it, click, the first one goes red immediately, and then one second later, the next one, and then one second later, the next one, and they all stay red for one second. So here it is again. I'll say click when I click it, click. So I hope you were successful in creating this application. Let's take a look at what the code looks like. So here's the code, and I did not write this in object-oriented programming. I'll leave it up to you to convert it. But the first thing you'll notice is I do make a window. I have a list of boxes here. And I go into a range, just a, just a loop, essentially, to create my boxes. Uh, I like making widgets this way, uh, especially if there are similar widgets, because I can simply put in variables for based on the loop in terms of where they go. However, uh, something recently, actually, I discovered, which I'd like to go over right now with you, and that is the, the box type of an FL box. So you notice here I've, I've specified the, that these boxes should be of type FL box. So the way we set the type, if you remember in the documentation, so here in the documentation we have box types and there they all are. But what's what I've come to uh, discover is that by default, many times the default box type is FL no box. Now, why is this important? Because if I right here take out this line, if I comment it out, so I do not set the box type to FL up box, and I leave it as the default box type, okay? Once again, um, let me show you where that is in terms of the documentation for widget. So if we come here and we go to widget in the classes, and then we go down to box, it's right there. We'll notice that it says here to set the box type this identifies a routine that draws the box and see FL box type for available types, which I just showed you. But it says that the widget depends on, depending on the widget, it's usually FL no box. Now, FL no box, so box types are here. Let's take a look at FL no box, what it says about it. So, FL no box, nothing is drawn at all. This box is invisible. So, that's the reason why. So essentially, that's the reason why if I take away this line that sets the box type, watch what will happen. Oops. See, so now, it's way down here. So now you see there's no green. And when I click on it, you can't really see anything that's happening because the boxes aren't being drawn properly. So we need to spe specifically set a box type 
uh, so that they actually are drawn. So now you can see if we now put this line back and set the box type and now we run it again, you'll notice now that the boxes come back and they, they're the green and they are um, drawn properly. So this is a pitfall to be aware of that if you uh, create FL boxes, and this by the way applies not just for setting the color of a box, but it also uh, uh, applies to if you want to set an image to an FL box or any, anything else. So uh, let's go through this program now. And so you notice here I create my boxes and I set my color, default color to green, and I'm appending those uh, created buttons into my list capital B. And then I um, create the button I can click to make them flash. And then I set the callback to that. Now that callback function is called flash all. Let's take a look at it. This function gets executed when I click on the button. So essentially, when I click on this start button here, this loop will finish. But that's not when the timeouts occur, right? Because I'm setting, I'm specifying the future date for the timeout to occur. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't have said date. Maybe I could say time. It's a better description. And so it's two times x is the is the future time. And in this case, x is the index of the loop here. That's iterating through the range of how many items are in B. So there's three things in B, so that's 0, 1, 2. Now if you double those, you get 0, 2, 4. That's when those, that's when those timeouts occur. And that's when this function is going to be executed, box flash. Now I'm also sending another, so I'm kind of like killing two birds with one stone, so to speak here. Because not only am I using X in determining when in the future the uh, timeout function will execute, but in addition, I'm specifying which widget of these three the, uh, will be affected. Because this index, right, is still 0, 1, 2. So in fact, those are the indices of the list of widgets of, of FL boxes on line four. So therefore, when you when I pass that X to box flash timeout callback, then I'm accessing box BX. And so therefore, if it's a green color, notice how I'm getting the get of the color, right? No argument inside. If it's green, then make it red on line I can just use this cursor. I can, you know, make it red on line five and then redraw it. Now, if it's not green, if it's red, then make it green, redraw it, and then get out of the function. Because if you don't get out of the function, then the last line of this timeout function is repeat the timeout. So essentially what it's going to do is the first time it comes in, if it's green, right, it's going to make it red but then it's gonna skip the else and it's gonna say repeat it. Now, when it repeats it, one second later, this is a repeat timeout, right? So we're specifying the time, the function name, and again, we're passing x as the integer argument, the um, user data. So now when it comes back up one second later and executes, this time it's not green, it's red, because we, we made it red before on line five. So now that it's now that it's not green, it, the else gets executed and it turns it green. It turns it back to green. It redraws it. But now, importantly, we hit return, which exits the function, which prevents it from calling the repeat timeout again a second time, and because we don't want it to, the second time through. So essentially, uh, this is kind of a cool way to make a. Uh, you know, a sequence of widgets do something specific 
in any order that you wish. And I would say probably the, the, the magic here, so to speak, is on, uh, uh, is on these two lines there. Because that happens instantaneously, but those, are, those timeouts in the future are all stored. And so uh, that's a kind of a cool little trick you can do to make things happen in that order. So uh, to end this lesson, I would suggest you subclass FL window in this uh, example code and try to convert it to an object-oriented program. All right, good luck. Thanks for watching.